In this tutorial, we're going to teach you how to create a moving platform. Oftentimes in Unity, moving platforms can be complicated and difficult to implement. The way that we're going to show you is going to be super efficient, and it's going to be compressed down into two small scripts, which you'll be able to use in both your 2D and 3D games. Let's get started. First thing you're going to do is create a new empty object and call it Moving Platform, and then click the Moving Platform, go to 2D Sprite to create a child object, and on the new game object, go to its sprite renderer, and for the sprite, just click whatever you want your platform to look like. We're going to go ahead and scale ours down a little bit to suit our needs. After that, go ahead and give it a box collider. In this example, ours will be 2D. And if your player can jump on it, then we're ready to start programming. Let's go into our project folder, and we're going to create a new script, and we're going to call it Moving Platform. And go ahead and open that up in Visual Studio. And the first thing that we're going to do is get rid of our start function. After that, go beneath our update function, and we're going to type void fixed update, which might not be necessary in our case, but Unity prefers it that it receives data in the update function and uses the data in the fixed update function. So remember, anything that happens in the fixed update function happens after the update function. So put your data in the update and use the data in the fixed update. Again, not always necessary, but um, we're going to do it. Moving on, above update, type out public list between two triangle thingies, put transform. We're going to call these waypoints. Beneath that, say public float move speed. And finally, we're going to say public int target. Now, in our update function, we want to say transform.position is equal to vector3.move towards with the parameter of transform.position, comma, waypoints at position target, dot position. One more comma, and this time it's going to be move speed times time dot delta time. Don't forget delta time, otherwise your platform speed will be dependent on the frame rate of the computer, making your game easier or harder depending on the quality of the computer. Next, we'll say if transform.position is equal to waypoints at position target.position, then we'll check if target is equal to waypoints.count. If it is, then we're going to make target equals zero. Then in an else statement, we're going to make target plus equals one. Also, list actually start at zero, so make it count minus one. I forgot about that. This will make it so our platform goes back and forth between the waypoints. Save that, and let's see how this looks. Before we're able to go into play mode, we're actually going to need to make the waypoints. So we'll go into our moving platform, create an empty object. We're going to call this waypoint parentheses one, duplicate that twice, highlight all of them. And then with this little box with an arrow, we're going to click it. And then we're going to select one of these icons that'll make it easier to see. After that, go ahead and put your waypoints wherever you want your platform to move between. I like to put the first one where the platform already is. After you're done with that, let's go ahead and go into play mode. And it looks like the platform's moving. See if it goes back to its original position. And there you go. Everything seems to be working just fine, except there's one problem. Now the platform is moving, but we are not. We're able to be pushed up, but we have to run along with it, and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and fix it. So we're going to go ahead and create a new C -sharp script, and we're going to call it Platform Detector. And the first thing we're going to do in our script is get rid of the start function and replace it with public bool is grounded, and then public bool check. Then in the update function, we're going to say if is grounded is not equal to true, then check is equal to false. So however you detect whether or not your character is in the air is how you want to determine what is grounded is equal to. So in our game, we are actually using the Unity standard assets. So we're just going to say using Unity standard assets, which I have copied and pasted, and we're going to make is grounded equal to that. How we do this is very similar to the way that you should. In our case, we changed the mGrounded variable on the character controller to be a public static bool. And you can do the same thing with your player movement script. Next, we'll go beneath our previous if statement, and we're going to say if check is not equal to true. Then we're going to type out raycast hit 2D, we'll call it hit, is equal to physics 2D dot raycast. And in the parameters, we're going to say transform.position, comma, vector2 down, comma, 0.125F. This is how we'll detect the ground. Beneath that, we're going to make an if statement, and it's going to be if hit.collider is not equal to null. And then inside of the curly brackets, we're going to make another if statement in which we're going to say if hit.collider.compare tag, and we'll feed it the parameter of moving platform. This is just a bool that'll return true if the collider does have that tag. Now, if you're going to put this script on your player character itself, it should say transform.setParent, and then feed it the parameter of hit.transform. In our case, it's actually going to be a child object. So we're going to go up and we're going to say public transform and we're going to make it player. Then going back into our if statement, we're going to place transform with player. 
After that, we're going to make an else statement, and we're going to say else player.setParent null. Finally, right after that, we're going to set check equal to true. Let's go ahead and save this and go back into our game. The next thing that we're going to have to do is create a new tag. So we'll go to our platform object, and we'll go up to its tag, and we'll hit add tag, and we're going to call it moving platform, just like in the script. Next, we'll go up to our player, and we'll give it a child object. We'll put it just beneath his feet, and we're going to put our script on it. And then we'll open up the component and then for the player variable we'll add in the parent object now if we go into play mode we'll see that we're still having a problem we can jump on the moving platform and we stick to it the way we're supposed to but we have a really hard time moving or jumping while on the platform or while being a child object of the platform and that's because we're using a rigid body and right now the rigid body is interpolating our movement what we want to do is go into our settings and change it from interpolate to extrapolate now that's a lot better, but if we go back into play mode, we'll notice that we still have one final problem. When we try to jump off the platform, you'll notice that we get some jittery movement. And that's because the platform is trying to move us at a different speed or in a different direction than what our player is going at. So we're going to set it up where if it's clear that the player wants to get off the platform, we're going to unparent him. To do that, we're going to go back into our platform detector script. Then we're going to go into our first if statement, go beneath the check equals false, and we're going to say if raw horizontal is greater than 0.25f or input.getAxiRaw horizontal is less than negative 0.25f, we're gonna say player.setParent null. And this will make it so if our player is clearly trying to jump off the platform, he'll become unparented and the jittery won't happen. If you wanna use bigger platforms in your game, this still shouldn't be a problem because your player will likely find a way to not jump off the edge. And once he lands on it again, he'll become a child object again. Once you've saved that, let's go see if this works. And there you go. You're able to jump up, you're able to move around, and you're able to jump off the platform all very smoothly. That's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below. We try to answer as many as possible, and we'll see you next time.